Am I looking at this one or this, this one? This one. Everybody good in the background? Hi everybody and welcome to episode 3 of A Round of Gwent. I'm Ash and I'm joined as always by Pavel Burja. Hey guys. And today we have special guests Aru and David who are going to be talking to us about holiday events which are occurring in Gwent. So you've probably already experienced the Mahakam Ale Fest which just recently finished, so now we're going to be learning about what the future of these holiday events has in store. Exactly. Well, let's kind of go back in time. We saw like something similar to what we saw in Mahakam Ale Fest first of a series of challenges and this was done first for the leaders and for the that you can unlock a leader card and now we have something that's a standalone thing with its own story let's say that is of course part of a single player game within a multiplayer game game within a game of course and tell me what was the idea to actually bring um, seasonal events and to have them in this formula as they are right now well we wanted to come up with something different from the multiplayer experience mm -hmm. and to present the players with a possibility of a challenge but at the same time to tell a short story which is placed somewhere within the Witcher universe and this is how holiday events came to life because it's really a perfect opportunity to take something that is happening in the real life like Oktoberfest like Halloween or something similar mm -hmm. and then give it a Witcher twist to it. Mm -hmm. Speaking of Halloween, does that mean that we'll have something new for Halloween? Because it's not very far away now. Yeah. Yes, yes. All I can say is that yes, you can expect something Halloween-y. <laughs> Halloween? -y. <laughs> yes, and uh, uh, maybe a bit of vampire touch to it. Ooh. Yeah, that's exciting. So it's going <laughs> so to have maybe a different feel to the Ale Fest. Is it going to be darker? Um, the setting is going to be a bit different, yeah. yes. Uh, with Ale Festival, it was all about having fun mm -hmm. and drinking with your buddies. Yeah. This time, it's going to be a bit different. Uh, if there are any people that are familiar with books, they might find something that they already know. Oh, that's very exciting. So all these events obviously give you the opportunity to be able to expand on things which might have been touched on in the Witcher games and the books. So you have a lot of material you can draw from. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And their self-contained nature mm -hmm. also allows us to, to explore very specific, even smaller events and just mm -hmm. live them in the form of Gwen. Yes, yeah. this, is, this is also a great thing because we are not limited by any time frame. We can just jump from one event to another mm -hmm. and present it in a way that we find the best. That's very exciting. So these um, holiday events, they're going to be recurring throughout the year. So we might expect things in the future, maybe a, uh, I don't know, a Christmas event or maybe a Valentine's event or um, ooh, something Alex like that. Yeah. I'm not going to spill it, okay. but uh, <laughs> since winter is coming, you can be ooh. sure to see something about mm -hmm. it. Very Alex exciting. <laughs> When it comes to means of actually telling the story, we know that these are narrated, but they also have the cards in, in a way they tell a story, which is given to us in the beginning, but then the player kind of decides how he or she wants to play it out. And we also have puzzles, so it's, it's very distinct. So how do you try to tell the story? Do you first get the story and then you kind of tailor the, the gameplay and the mechanics around that, or is it the other way around? Well, first you think about the nature of the event itself. We think uh, what are the roots of it and uh, what would be the best way to present it within our uh, game. So let's say if this is a uh, drinking festival, we you say drinking, I think buffing. <laughs> and that was the main, the main thing for the first yeah. encounter in the uh, Ale Festival. Mm -hmm. It's a cool thing because it allows us, from a design perspective, to, to kind of let ourselves be inspired by the story and I'll try to tell a story through the mechanics that we are trying to do and especially the, the puzzles part also allow us to change the rules of Basic Gwent a little bit, especially to be able to fit this very specific story that we have, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, since it's like separate from multiplayer, what yeah, you can do say. is do like crazy things and yes, you can change the mechanics of the cards and the cards that you know and should this also new cards like we had the the rotten ale and the good ale yes, which yep. uh, had different effects for example so you're kind of bringing something totally new to yeah, the game. Yeah you don't have to worry about balancing I guess so you can let it tell exactly. the story. Exactly this, this is the best part of it because we have so much freedom mm -hmm. 
uh, that we can go really crazy with our designs. There's still, of course, balancing in terms of like, it's, it's a different style of balancing. It's not balancing overall with all of the other cards in the game. It's mm -hmm. sort of balancing in terms of how difficult do we want it to be, to make it interesting, to make it fun. Uh, of course, I would say that the concept here is fun mostly oriented to yes. that, yeah. right? This is the main goal yeah. of it. So we briefly touched on it. Um, there's a difference between the different uh, types of games you can play in these holiday events. Um, so how do you go about, you know, coming up with these puzzles? Yeah. <laughs> I think I think with the puzzles, the, the, the first thing that we get is, is the concept, right? What do we want to do? And then we set a goal to, to reach that concept. Well, for in this case, in the case that we saw with the Mahakamea Festival, Aru came up with the idea of having these two bards battling each other and, and he, 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 he told me about this cool thing where you have one bard on one side and one on the other as if on the siege row is the stage mm -hmm. and then you have the, the, the festival goers who are moving around from stage to stage and you're playing music to try to attract them to your own yeah. stage right and this is where where it started from and then we were thinking about how did yeah, that and this go? Is, and this is the moment when it got difficult <laughs> because we had a great concept it looked great on paper but then how do you actually make it work yeah and it took us some time and a lot of yeah. I don't think David's magic to it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think originally it was going to be a puzzle, right? Did we always want it to be a puzzle? No, at first it was supposed to be a battle between two bards, but not necessarily focused on attracting more fest goers mm -hmm. under your stage. Mm -hmm. It was it was meant to be something different, but when while developing it, we came up with the idea of making it the entire puzzle. Yeah, and then it made much more sense for the for the whole concept. It made much more sense for the whole storytelling, right? Yeah. The way we usually do it is so we have the goal. Like in, in the Mahakamel Festival, you saw that we need to attract up to four. Um, festival goers to your sides of the board to your stage basically mm -hmm. right so and then usually what we do is we start from there and we start working back to the starting situation right and then once we've reached that which usually takes a lot of trial and error a lot of putting trying different things I think puzzles are one of the things that are designed a lot like while playing Mm -hmm. Right. We, 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 as I said, we have a starting point and an end point, and we need to fill in the the insides. Right. So what we do is we walk back from that, put the options for the players to actually manage to reach that goal, and then put uh, carefully place um, branching paths, if you would say, if you could say, where the where the player needs to make a decision, uh, and therefore reach reach the, the the end goal, which in this case was. What and this was. actually sounds easy when <laughs> when David. Uh, when David it explains that, it yes, that way. but it actually took an entire board in one of our conference rooms yes, yes. to cover it step <laughs> by step. So how we want to play it up. So you play this card, and then there's a board state which changes to this, and yes. then okay, well, this card is not here, so we can put oh, we should put this card in the hand yeah. so that you can be, be able to do this. But we want different ways to solve it. Yeah, let's do it this way, so that we have two, these two different ways to solve <laughs> it. And this conversation filled uh -huh. up the entire whiteboard. <laughs> yeah. And you have seen the first result yeah. of it, right? Yeah, I, I play the first, first iteration, and I tried it like six times. So I'm like, I can't do it. And I had like Luigi next to me. I'm like, Luigi, tell me, how do I do it step by step? He's like, oh, you do this and this and that. And we got to the end. We're like, no, this isn't going to work out. Yeah, that was the moment <laughs> when you realized that it might be a bit too hard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and then we, we toned it down. And, and, and it's cool how, with puzzles, it's cool how very small changes make a puzzle a lot harder yes. or a lot easier, right? You can see the difference between the hard version and the, the easy version in the game yeah. that we had, that, 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 that we had yeah. right? But, but it, it's really interesting how very, very small tweaks change the whole perspective of how mm -hmm. things change in that situation. Yeah. So this ability to be able to tell the story through the puzzles is obviously a fantastic thing for Gwent. I think everybody really enjoys it. Are we going to see this style of game in anything in the future, maybe Thronebreak? Yes, yes, there will be. Uh, this is the forte of puzzles, right? When you have a very specific situation, like this was in the Mahakamea Festival, you can tell the story much better if the goal that you have matches the goal of the story right now, right? And this feels like you're 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 doing much. You, you, the player feels a lot more like they're active within this sort of story telling. Of course, there's a lot of um, different things that you choices that you will make through Throne, Throne, Thronebreaker, but some of them are represented as a battle and how how you, 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 you had been able to solve that particular situation, right? 
we can't, I won't go to into much <laughs> details, I don't want to spoil any of the story, but many, uh, a number of story elements will be represented through these different goals and different mechanics mm -hmm. and different ways to be able to play Gwent. And it's a nice playground for us designers to be able to explore these possibilities that our game actually allows us to, allows us to do, right? Mm -hmm. It's a really cool thing for you, David, because I know you have a board game background. It lets you kind of go crazy with the puzzles and do some weird, crazy mechanics that you don't normally see in Gwent, since uh, everything needs to be super polished, balanced, so now you can kind of, you know, do different things. I think the other thing that comes in puzzles from, from probably from, from the board games is that the, um, the more, the larger amount of available information for the player. Like if you saw the puzzle that we had in Mahakamel Festival, the, the, the opponent was not playing any cards and all of the sort of permutations of what will happen was actually visible to you on the board. Yeah. And th this this enables the, the, the puzzle, right? If you have, although we will maybe try something where, where we will involve AI plays yeah. like this, but we will always give the player more information of mm -hmm. what is possible for, for, for it to happen so that... It's like player is presented with a certain amount of tools and they then have to play around with it mm -hmm. to achieve victory. Okay, wonderful. So thank you for shedding some light on what these future holiday events might be and you know, giving us a bit of an insight into the creative process behind them. I think we all are very excited for what the future might hold. But now we're going to go and talk about our community. Alright guys, welcome to the Community Corner. What I have for you this time is a couple fan arts and also some other cool exclusive things that we're working on. So let's start with the first one. The first one's by Raul Volpato and what it features is small Gwent cards of the cards that you actually know within the game. So we have Geralt, Ciri, um, Yennefer, and Triss and they're portrayed as small squares as you guys can see. Yeah, it's cool. They look like, a bit like avatars, don't yeah. they? Yeah, yeah I, could, I would use an avatar like that. Yeah, yeah me too. too. Moving on, um, we actually featured recently on social one of uh, the last fan arts by Paul Pass 1988, and this one features Skellige, and it's very similar to the Nilfgaardian one that you saw in the first episode of A Round of Gwent, and this one is the final one. Although I'm kind of thinking about a neutral faction. That would be cool. That would be interesting. I really quite... love the details that they managed to you know, fit into the picture. It's amazing. Yeah. And if you're a fan of the lore, yeah. you can find a lot of uh, subtle references and things in there. We've been working with her for a long Angry time. Angry Cyrus. <laughs> Angry Cyrus, yeah. yeah. <laughs> into battle. All right, uh, moving on to something that is not a founder, but it's something that we've been working on. So each Thursday, we want you to send over your uh, memes, because of course, we love memes, I love memes, I know you guys probably also love memes. <laughs> and, and we will feature these on our social channels. So you can either leave them in the comment sections whenever you see a meme posted by us, so each Thursday, or you can uh, send them to fanart at tzadaprojectred.com. Mm -hmm. We're expecting some wonderful stuff because the community have shown that they have a passion for memes as well. Yes, uh, and creativity, of course. Yeah. I even have a folder with all the memes that they made of me, so <laughs> I love that folder. Like this one, right? That we just... Oh, no. No, wait, that, uh, that, oh, that wasn't me. That was uh, a drowner. Oh, oh that's me. That was that's me before coffee, yeah. No. That's how it looks. Uh, moving on, we have uh, another foreign art. Uh, this one is um, of Jorvet and Roche. They're playing um, Gwent on a tree. And this one's by Strix MB. And it also has a very cool um, art style. And you wouldn't see those two guys actually yeah. being friendly. Hanging out together. Yeah. Oh. Last, uh, founded by Yakiron. This one is a propaganda of Geralt um, recruiting players for uh, Gwent match. I'm so, sold already. Yeah. <laughs> we should like uh, we should post these around the office. Like yeah. I Maybe want you to on outside them. or outside. Yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll, All what I'll do today is I'll print a thousand copies and go around Warsaw pasting them. <laughs> yeah. I think that's a good idea. And of course, don't forget about the play of the month. You can go to playgwent.com slash POTM and send us your best entries. It can be something that went well, uh, matched out, resulted in a, in a bad result for you. Or um, if you got totally scored, you can also send that to us. Or if you made a big mistake, that's also fine. And we fine. prefer the latter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the worse, the better, actually. <laughs> Totally score. Yeah, and also, as you probably saw, we're missing Adelbert this time. He's working on something very special, and you'll get to see it in soon. Can I say soon? I think I, can <laughs> I don't say think soon. you can say soon anymore. Yeah. Although something special from Adelbert seems like yeah, um, it's a good point. Risky. Yeah, I guess we'll have to wait. Something crazy for sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
Okay, so wonderful. Uh, I think that concludes this episode. Thank you very much for coming on the show and telling us a bit more about what we can expect from seasonal events in the future. And as always, it was great to hear from the community, you know, in, in the community corner, um, some wonderful art pieces there. And I'm excited to see what comes with the meme suggestions in the future. So that is everything for today. Thank you very much for watching and we will see you on the next episode. Okay.